All good? Yes. Is the board out of shot? The board is out of shot. Is the sound okay? It sounds great. Great. <laughs> Funny hair though. <laughs> My mum's my cameraman during quarantine. <laughs> Hello Electra Heads. This is the Evolve Stoke. I've been riding this board for about six months now and today I'm going to tell you what it's like to ride, what it's like to live with, whether it justifies its steep price and, well, whether or not you should buy one. Truth be told, this is not a very easy review to make because my thoughts towards this board and Evolve in general are quite complicated. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's begin at the beginning. So for those of you who don't know, Evolve is an Australia-based e-skate company founded around mid-2012, about the same time as Boosted. Evolve claims to be the Lamborghini of e-skate, which is a big claim. But it's true in certain ways, like Lambos, Evolve boards look great and are fast as all f also like Lamborghini, Evolve boards are expensive. Now Evolve are fairly unapologetic about this. They say their boards cost more because they're better made using higher quality components and that their customer service is superior. And we'll get to how true all of that is a little bit later on. So let's get into the stoke. First of all, I'm gonna flash the specs for this board up on screen. To be honest with you, electric skateboard specs don't mean very much, but some people care. So here they are, specs. <laughs> And they're gone. Actually, there is one spec worth mentioning, which is the range. The quoted range of this board is up to 10 miles. Now, I'm a fairly heavyweight rider. I'm a little under 100 kilos, or at least I was before quarantine. And I've been seeing around four to seven miles of range on this board, which isn't great, but it's about what I'd expect for a short board like this. Can't complain. So let's begin with the good stuff about this board. And the first thing I have to mention is that it's really great to ride. One of the typical downsides to shorter electric skateboards is that they are less stable and therefore harder to ride than long boards. Shorter wheelbase equals less stable, makes sense. But I've found that that's not really the case with the Stoke, and that's thanks to this big wide deck and big wide trucks. If you compare this to, actually, hang on. If you compare it to this, which is my old cruiser board from my youth, same length, same idea, kind of type of board, but you can see the Stoke is just a much bigger, chunkier thing. Uh, same story for the trucks. It's really wide for a board this length. The upshot of this is that when I ride the Stoke, I feel the same sense of stability that I'd usually expect from a much longer board. Even at speed, it just feels really solid under your feet. And let me tell you, you'll be grateful for that stability because the Stoke is quick. As I said, I'm no lightweight, but even while carrying me, this thing absolutely flies. I don't have exact numbers on acceleration and top speed. Again, they're not really that worth mentioning because they're different rider to rider. But I've always found with electric skateboards, they're either quick enough or they're not. This, just like every other Evolve product I've ridden, is more than quick enough. It's belt driven, so you get that instant torque delivery. And when you put it up in GTR mode, it just keeps on going. Speaking of the speed modes, Evolve, small gripe. I understand why your slowest speed mode is called Eco. That makes sense. I understand why your fastest speed mode is called GTR, because your fastest board is called the GTR. Makes sense. But the middle speed setting is called Pro? Surely a better name for that medium setting would be Sport or Medium. Not a big deal, just thought I'd throw it out there. Anyway, another thing I really like about the Stoke is that it's a short board, which means it's really, really agile. The combination of the shorter wheelbase and the addition of a kicktail means you can really throw this board around. You can jump it down curbs, you can make really sharp turns, it's just a very nimble board. And on top of that, the Stoke is running double kingpin trucks, which it's pretty crazy. For those of you that don't know, double kingpin trucks are designed to help boards turn really sharply and really hard. And usually you see them on long, big wheeled all-terrain boards that would kind of struggle with maneuverability with normal trucks. When you put double kingpin trucks on an already agile short board, what you get is an absolute carve monster. This board just wants to do this all the time. And that's a lot of fun. But to be completely honest with you, as a very average skilled rider, I have found myself tightening the trucks up just so I can go in a straight line some of the time. Now these things I've just mentioned, these for me are the big strengths of the Stoke. Its unique selling point is the way that it combines the agility of a short board with the speed and stability of a much longer board. That is the Stoke's 
specialty. So before we move on to a few less good things, I just want to run through some slightly more subjective stuff that I like about this board personally. For one, it looks great. I honestly think this is one of the best looking electric skateboards that you can buy right now. I especially love this exposed wood finish on the top. I know that some people are a bit concerned about spray on grip tape because it kind of wears over time, which is true because, hang on. Again, coming back to my old cruiser, you can see this perfectly smooth warm spot here from where I've been turning my front foot. I haven't had any such issues on the Stoke yet and it might wear over time, but you can just spray more on. It looks cool, you know, that's more important, right? Another thing I like about this board is the Evolve remote. This thing gets a lot of stick. Some people really don't like the Evolve remote. I think it's absolutely fine. It makes sense to me. You've got your dead man switch here, throttle, brake on top. The brake's really strong on this board, by the way. I mean, if I'm being really pedantic, I guess that the throttle could be a little bit more expensive feeling. It's just a little bit mushy, which kind of makes it slightly harder to really modulate your throttle than it would be with a really high quality trigger. But that really is me being pedantic. I don't really have any complaints about the remote. Also, and this is really properly personal preference, but I love the fact that this board uses a belt drive system. That's my favorite kind of board, personally. I like the performance of belt drive. I even like the whining noise that it makes. I appreciate it's not for everyone. If you're looking for a board that's really low maintenance, for example, you're probably better off with hub motors. I've already snapped and had to replace a belt on this board, which is kind of annoying, but you know what? Belts are cheap, replacing them is easy, and I actually think it's quite important to know how to take your board apart and put it back together again anyway. On top of that, I had a really good experience with Evolve's customer service. They were friendly, they were helpful, they sent the part really quickly. No complaints in that department. One final advantage of the Stoke that's well worth mentioning is that you can fly with this board. Literally, like on planes and stuff. Batteries above 160 watt hours are banned on all commercial flights, but the Stoke uses a 151 watt hour battery, making it one of very few electric skateboards that you can take abroad. If I'm being really honest, I think personally, I would just rather the board have had a bigger battery and more range and not be allowed on flights, but yeah, that's just me. Okay, that's the good stuff done. Let's talk about a few things that I'm not such a fan of with this board. For one, it's really not that portable. People have this idea that short boards are gonna be way easier to carry around than a longboard, and that's certainly true of non-electric boards. Again, using my little cruiser as an example, I used to walk around university with it like hanging from my backpack strap. No problem, brilliant. But try doing that with an electric skateboard. Oh, and you're either gonna break your backpack or tear your shoulder off. I guess the problem really is that all electric skateboards, short or long, are heavy because they've got batteries. And it is true that with a shorter board like this, you can walk around carrying it by the trucks without it scraping the ground. But is it way more portable than a long board? No. By the way, I do realize that carrying a skateboard by the trucks like this is like a deadly sin in skate culture, but you know what? Regular skateboards don't weigh seven kilos, so suck it, Tony Hawk. I mean, it... <laughs> It's like, watch what you wish for. So I guess this really isn't a criticism of the Stoke in general, more just electric shortboards. They're not really that much more portable. The second problem I have with the Stoke is that for me personally, the wheels are too small. The Stoke comes with 85 millimeter orangutan wheels, really high quality longboard wheels. But with a wheel that size, you really do have to be careful for imperfections and rocks and cracks in the road, which is kind of a shame because as I said, this is a fast, stable board and it really detracts from that smooth riding experience that I'm constantly having to look out for twigs. Three bigger wheels. Now, if you live somewhere with super smooth, perfect roads, this is not gonna be an issue for you. But in my experience in the UK, our roads and pavements just aren't good enough to ride wheels that size with confidence. And to make matters worse, you actually can't put bigger wheels on the Stoke. I did ask Evolve about this and they said that anything bigger than 85 millimeters and you run the risk of wheel rub. I think if you tightened your trucks up, you could probably get away with a set of 90 millimeters, which would help the problem quite a bit. But any more than that and you'd be pushing your luck. Another problem I have with the Stoke is the price. The Stoke costs around a thousand pounds in the UK, which as far as I know, makes it the most expensive short electric board you can buy. Now, there's nothing wrong with charging a premium price for a premium product, but just generally speaking, when I look at the spec sheets of Evolve boards and then compare them to the specs of rival boards that cost a lot less, I just don't see enough of a difference to justify the price hike. Don't get me wrong, this is a very nice board. It feels expensive, it feels solid, but does that justify the significant price increase? 
not so sure. I definitely think that when you buy a board from Evolve, a lot of what you're paying for is the brand name. And now we arrive at the big issue, and the reason why I feel I can't fully recommend this board, even though I really like mine. The problem I'm referring to is a fault that's been known to affect some Evolve boards, causing the brakes to suddenly lock up at speed. Now, I've never experienced this myself, but I have a friend who has, and after a quick search online, I was able to find multiple accounts of Evolve owners all reporting the exact same malfunction, some of whom had been badly hurt by it. Clearly, this only affects a very small number of Evolve boards, but when it comes to a malfunction that dangerous, a handful is a handful too many. For me, the really alarming thing is that there are reports of this problem from two years ago and some from this year, as recently as last month, suggesting that this has been happening for a long time and that apparently nothing has been done about it. My Evolve board has not missed a beat since I got it, but since hearing about this, I find that whenever I ride it, I am worried that my brakes are suddenly going to lock up. And that thought causes me to ride slower and more carefully than I otherwise would, which is a real shame because this thing is made to be ridden hard. Look, maybe these wheel lockups are complete fiction, a big conspiracy invented by Evolve's enemies to tarnish their brand's name, and I'm a dummy for believing it. I guess you'll just have to decide that one for yourself. All I can suggest is that you do thorough research before buying your board. So there we have it. Those are my thoughts on the Evolve Stoke, a difficult board to review. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been like with Evolve. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.